In the year 2022, the United States is preparing for the 8th edition of The Purge, an annual event where all crimes are overlooked by the authorities for just one night. Even violence, in all its types, is allowed for the duration of the event. James Sandin is a successful American who plans to protect his family during the purge using state-of-the-art equipment. In his house, in an upmarket neighborhood, he manages to create a real fortress, but things soon take a wrong turn. After a man manages to breach the security system with the help of the protagonist's son, James will need to fight for his family's safety. Can he keep his wife and children alive during this time? Check out the recap of The Purge. The Beginning The film begins by showing several crime and fight scenes on the streets of the United States, in addition to images of fires and widespread confusion. In 2014, in the film's story, the two major parties of the United States collapsed. Republicans and Democrats completely lost control, and an economic crisis ensued. From this breakdown, a new party was created, under the name The New Founding Fathers of America. The head of the party is the character Bracken. He is also the sitting U.S. president in the plot. Along with his allies, the president announced a new law called the Purge. Under this legislation, the United States has instituted one night a year when no activity can be considered criminal. In other words, this means that any kind of violence, no matter how brutal, is totally within the law on that given time. The Day of the Purge the story of the film takes place in 2022, eight years after the creation of The Purge, and the United States is practically free of violent crime. In the news, journalists say that the country has recorded an apparent improvement in various statistics since the implementation of the new law. In addition to the decrease in violent crime, unemployment has also dropped quite considerably. The plot begins on the day set for the 2022's Purge, and the main character, James Sandin, drives to his home. The protagonist lives in a prime neighborhood and makes plans to protect himself during the night. James' idea is to spend the night locked in the house with his wife Mary and their children, Zoe and Charlie. When Zoe realizes that her father is coming home, she asks her boyfriend, Henry, to escape through the window since James is against their relationship. Even though he gets upset, the boy runs away from the room, avoiding meeting his girlfriend's father. The whole neighborhood is preparing for the purge. Many put blue flowers in front of their house to show support for the event, and one neighbor even brings Mary a plate of candy. Meanwhile, Charlie, the youngest son, plays with a scary robot, made from an old doll and various items such as some flashlights, laser lights, and a camera. After dinner, the family gathers in one of the rooms to plan the strategy they will adopt during the night. James turns on all the security cameras around the house and activates another security system in his computer, lowering metal bars on all windows and doors. Soon, the entire house is transformed into a fortress. We soon realize that the family has a great advantage over the residents of more humble areas of the city, since not everyone can afford security equipment of this caliber. After getting a number of weapons to protect his family, James sits down next to his wife and children to watch the announcement of the beginning of the purge on television. When the broadcast ends, a siren marks the beginning of the event. Zoe goes back to her room, and Charlie complains to her parents about the concept of the purge, saying he doesn't agree with the legislation. The protagonist tries to talk to his son, saying that this is important so that people can release their anger and frustrations. Despite his father's efforts, the boy remains indignant with the injustices caused by the purge. After all, the richest will always have an advantage against the poorest, who do not have sufficient means to ensure their safety. Upon arriving in her room, Zoe is surprised by Henry, who has managed to find a way into the house before the security system was triggered. Henry says he'd like to talk to the girl's father about the relationship, making use of the fact that during that night he quite literally can't get kicked out of the house. While the family tries to relax, Charlie plays with his robot, which he has nicknamed Timmy. With a remote control, he makes the doll walk around the house, filming everything with a small camera. A cry for help. Through the robot's images, Charlie sees the security camera of the house and notices a man running towards the residence, asking for help. Wanting to help him out, 
Charlie disarms the metal door. Realizing that the door had been disarmed, James rushes to the control room and quickly triggers the mechanism again. Despite that, the man manages to get into the house and comes face to face with James, Mary, and Charlie. Suddenly, everyone is surprised by Henry, who shoots the protagonist. The boy wants to kill James so he can keep his relationship with Zoe. The two begin opening fire against each other. During the confrontation, Henry ends up getting shot, and Zoe runs towards him to save him. In the midst of the confusion, James realizes that the man who entered the house is missing, and no one knows where he is. Fearing for his family's safety, he takes everyone to a safe room and goes out to find Zoe. When he returns to the corridor, he finds Henry's lifeless corpse. While the protagonist checks the boy's vital signs, we realize that the man who had disappeared is right behind him, but James does not notice him. Through the security camera, Charlie sees several people outside the house, all wearing masks and armed from head to toe. Frightened, he calls out for his father, uninvited guest. Through the electronic doorman, a man who appears to be the leader of the group starts talking, saying that one of their targets has been lost and is apparently inside the house. The man knows James' name and asks for the man to be released so the group can finish the job. He threatens the family saying that if they do not cooperate, the group will find a way in. As they move away from the security camera, the intruders turn off the power supply to the house, and everything goes dark. Frightened, James gathers the family together and says they need to find the man and put him out. Charlie, however, disagrees with his father. James and Mary go out to look for the man, and their youngest son uses his robot to look for him as well. Without much effort, Charlie finds the man hiding behind the living room couch and starts flashing the robot's lights, asking him to follow him. The boy leads the man to a better hiding place, and he thanks him for his help. Meanwhile, the leader of the group outside calls James to the front door, and the two talk through a small opening. The protagonist explains that the family is not trying to save the stranger, and that he simply entered the house. The leader then shoots one of his own companions, giving a clear message that he was not there to play around. James, even more terrified, goes back to search for the stranger who was taking refuge in his house. Upon entering Charlie's room, he sees the man holding Zoe hostage, using a gun. As he makes threats to the protagonist, Mary emerges from behind them, and James gets into a close-range fight with the man. Unintentionally, the main character ends up shooting the man, and Mary hurries to tie him up. As it could not be any different, the man fights to protect himself, and Mary uses a knife to poke at his wounds, forcing him to cooperate. Invasion With the stranger now completely under his family's control, James must decide what to do. Even though he initially planned to hand the invader over to the group on the outside, the idea doesn't seem to be the best possible one. Mary and James are reluctant to hand the man over to his own death and he then suggests going outside and trying to save the family. While everyone was discussing what to do, the leader of the group lets them know that the equipment to knock down the house's doors had arrived. They tie giant chains to the metal barriers of the residence, and manage to pull them off with the help of a large vehicle. James hands Charlie a gun and tells the boy to hide in the basement. In a haste to protect himself, the protagonist forgets to untie the man who is wanted by the group. The invaders finally enter the house, and one of them goes straight to the basement, where he finds Charlie. Just as the man gets ready to kill the boy, James comes up from behind him and saves his son. Killers roam around the house, and the protagonist fights to protect his family, killing several of them. James manages to kill several of the invaders, but the leader of the group suddenly appears and attacks the owner of the house with a knife. Unaware that his father had been attacked, Charlie hides in the control room, where he watches the security cameras. In the footage, he sees two of his neighbors approaching some of the invaders and shooting at them. From then on, all the neighbors gather to protect the Sandin family. But despite that, Mary ends up being captured by two of the invaders. And just as one of the killers was ready to attack her, two neighbors appear on the scene and save the woman. Mary runs as fast as she can to save her husband, but when she reaches him, the leader of the invading group appears in the room, carrying his gun. He thanks the couple for their sacrifice, but before firing he is surprised by Zoe, who comes out of nowhere and saves her parents, 
killing the invader, the family then gathers around James, who is extremely injured. Mary thanks the neighbors for their help, but it is at this point that she realizes that, in truth, all the neighbors wanted to do was kill the Sandin family themselves. The neighbors say they've always been jealous of James' money, and would love to get rid of this frustration during the purge. While James' body is taken to another room, the rest of the family is taken hostage. Mary pleads for the children to be spared, and everyone is tied up. After immobilizing the family, the neighbors hold hands in a sort of circle, and begin to thank the new party of the United States for the opportunity granted upon them. They had always been jealous of James' family, and now they could finally put all their anger and frustration out there. Plot Twist Just when the Sandin family thought the worst was about to happen, the stranger who took refuge in the house suddenly appears. Without a second thought, he shoots the armed neighbor and takes one of the women hostage, turning the tables in the situation. Grace, the neighbor who seems to be leading the group, asks Mary to kill them all, to get it over with. But the owner of the house says she can't take all these killings anymore. She then orders everyone to stay exactly where they are until 7 a.m., when the purge will come to an end. Everyone remains seated in a house, while the stranger traces his gun at the neighbors, to ensure the family's safety. Charlie and Zoe cry in despair over their father's body. While everyone waits for 7 o'clock in the morning, Grace rebels and tries to steal the rifle from Mary's hand. The protagonist, however, manages to defend herself and strikes her neighbor several times. Finally, the siren sounds again, marking the end of the purge. Mary orders everyone to leave the house and thanks the stranger for all the help, who at the end of the story ended up saving the family. Mary and her children gather at the door of the house as they watch all the bodies that lie outside the residence. In the background, a voice announces that this was the best purge since the law went into effect. The news soon begins to report that the streets are full of bodies, and that the stock exchange has risen considerably. The film ends leaving several questions up in the air, but mainly the discrepancy between the reality of the richest families and that of the poorest. Had the stranger not managed to take shelter inside the home of the Sandin family, he certainly would have been no match for the strong arsenal of the neighborhood and the group hunting him. Asterisk. Today's recap ends here. But before you go don't forget to share with us what you think about this movie. If this kind of extremist legislation was really implemented, would you be able to survive? What would your strategy be? Tell us in the comments. Thank you so much for listening and until the next video.